Once you kind of understand the basics of FM and all it really is, you should have no problem working with an instrument like FM8. And in a lot of ways, FM8 is easier than FM4, mainly because the modulation matrix is a little more intuitive and because your envelopes are combined with your oscillators making them purely operators by definition. And so here in the FM8, it harkens back to the days of the DX7. You actually have six independent operators here, A through F. All of them will look identical here from the start. And then from there, it's really just a matter of choosing what you want to be carriers, what you want to be modulators, and then working with the different envelopes. And that's really all this is so we'll just go through a really quick example here and talk about some of the unique features of this instrument probably the most interesting feature are the envelopes because these envelopes can be multi-stage so i'm just going to start by adding some fm from f on f so f would then serve as both a carrier because it is outputting down here we can hear that i can change the level like so and then i can have it work as a modulator by having it modulate itself and to do that i just click right above and you can see how we create that little matrix densing up the signal a little bit and what's cool about this instrument is you can go into the spectrum display and you can see exactly what it is you're doing. So we have a little bit of like an aliasing type distortion. So I can bring that out and get ourselves something a little bit closer to a sawtooth wave. So let's go back into the envelope here. And I can get there a variety of ways. Usually what's easiest for me is to just click on the operator I'm working with and then to make my changes. With the DX7, you're normally always just going to have sine waves. But with the FM8, you can actually choose a bunch of different waveforms, which is going to get you a nice wide variety of textures, especially when you start to apply FM. But I just want to show you how in this instrument you can create multi-stage releases. You can also tempo sync things, which is kind of cool. You see how it's snapping to the grid like so, and we have the display right there. So if I listen to it now, we have a little bit of a release happening. Let's just make it a lot longer for the sake of example. Go all the way out there to one full bar. But if I right click, I can create another point. And now I can kind of do like a little multi-stage action happening here, especially if my sustain is down. For example, I could take the release and have it initially come back up and then go down. So let's listen to this. We can watch and follow the tracing of this. And this becomes then really cool when you combine it with FM depth. Which in a way is happening here, right? Because the envelope is not only controlling what's happening on the output, but it's also controlling this velocity of 41. So I could bring this up a little bit and we'll then hear how the sound starts. Very aggressive. So it should go all the way. I let it go. You can hear how that's working. So very, very cool stuff right there. Definitely take advantage of that. You can also create loops before you get to the release stage by again right clicking you can add like as many of these points as you want and so i'm just going to extend this out so we can hear it a little bit better we'll bring this point down we'll do something like that add another point and bring it up and we can listen to this loop that then is created here it's going through let's go all the way so we can really hear this and I'll just click from the start so I can follow and trace it along with you here. All right, let's bring it back a little. So we go. And we're able to then loop through. I let it go. It goes through the release stage like so. All right, so that's something that you can do in this instrument that you can't do in the FM4. So you have a more complex envelope, and with the DX7 as well, 
wasn't really possible to make an envelope this complex, but having the ability to loop within the envelope is really significant and really useful when you consider that then you can be bringing in and out partials, almost like a filter would do if you put an LFO on it. That's kind of what you're creating here is like a little LFO within the envelope. And I really love that feature of FM8. So let's go back and just start with a new sound so I can show you how the matrix is working here. I can turn on any of these operators by right clicking. So let's right click here to E. E has been turned on, but we're not getting any signal from it right now because it is not acting as either a modulator or a carrier. If we want E to be a carrier, I just come down here, I add some level to it, but right now the ratio is exactly the same. I'm not really hearing much, but I could go to the offset, which remember is consistent, and I could detune these guys. So I could go in here and start to offset this. We get the beating effect occurring. We can go and look at the spectrum and see how it's slightly off kilter. We could go back into D, turn that on. We could offset that the other way. And then the cool thing is at the bottom, this is determining pan position. So I could pan this slightly to the left and this slightly to the right. You get an effect like that. Then if we apply a little FM into all of these. Not only do you get a stereo signal, but you get a sound that you would probably more normally expect to hear from like a subtractive synthesizer. And obviously we just don't have to do modulation by itself. We can also go in here and have these guys modulate one another. So we could have E going into F or we could have F going into E. If I put F into E, it's not going to make any difference in the sound because E is not outputting. But if I go in, I have E go into F, which is acting as a carrier, F is acting as a carrier, we'll see the frequency modulation starting to occur and the sidebands that are generated. And then we can obviously change the ratio, same exact rules apply as before. You can watch and see what I love about this instrument is that in real time, you can watch and see how it changes and impacts the spectrum. So let's go all the way in with this and then change the envelope on E, right? To make it more interesting. But why don't we make this into a loop? <laughs> it's pretty cool, maybe we tempo sync it. We don't have any release on F, so let's go into our envelope for F, add some release. Maybe we'll offset it just a little bit. Or a lot bit. <laughs> And then what's really cool about this is, okay, I could use D to almost act as like a uh, sub. I could put this in here to 0.5, have this just straight outputting, maybe have it FM on itself a little bit, or use E, maybe use F, ooh, there we go. And to be 100% honest, that's really the basics of it. That's the crux of it. You could go and start to add more of these, create different and unique envelope shapes for everything. That would definitely be uh, a good idea. And that's kind of how you create these patches here uh, with FM synthesis. It's really not any more complicated than that. Although this instrument does go a little bit deeper. And so we will be looking at that in the next video, how you can use an FM synthesizer more like a subtractive synthesizer.